Dramatically reducing the time it takes to develop new technologies will promote green innovation. So if we're going to get to net zero carbon by 2050, we have to get down to 1980s levels of emissions by 2030. And to do this, we have to start reducing emissions immediately. I'm Rob Miller, I'm director of the Whittle Laboratory. The Whittle Lab in Cambridge has a long history in aviation, the power generation industry. And for the last 50 years, we've been a major industrial partner with Rolls-Royce, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, Siemens, and more recently, Dyson. The Whittle Lab works on propulsion for air travel, so this is a jet engine you see under the wing of your plane, gas-based power stations, but it could also be in terms of wind turbines or tidal turbines. Currently, the aviation industry is responsible for only around 2% of emissions, but this is growing rapidly. I believe that 30 or 40% cuts in emissions are not going to allow us to remain an investable proposition. I think to retain society's trust, we have to aim at net zero. About eight years ago, we decided that as well as looking at the technologies themselves, we'd look at the technology development process. And the aim was to try and accelerate that process to meet the challenge of net carbon by 2050. My name's Tony Dickens. I'm a senior research associate here at the Wuthle Lab. I originally did my PhD here at the Wuthle Lab and then ran away and designed Formula One cars for a few years. There was a clear need and desire from companies like Rolls-Royce to develop jet engine technology more quickly. Rob Miller enticed me to come back to the lab to speed up testing for aero engines and propulsion and power. Traditionally, what would happen is you would do a big computational study, model everything on the computer, choose your best design, and then go and test it. You'd look at those results and they wouldn't be what you'd expect. But you wouldn't have time to really understand why they weren't what you expect. What rapid testing allows us to do is have an idea, make it, test it, find out we were wrong, then have another go and learn from it quickly. In every single one of these boxes is a new set of blades of a new design that we rapidly manufactured here in the lab and then we can test its efficiency and also its safety margin. When we used to make blades from plastic or other methods, it used to take us months, but now we can make a whole new set in about two days. If we can make one of these blade sets a tenth of a percent more efficient, that will save us millions of tonnes of CO2 emissions per year. We're getting problems that need answers in three months, not three years. We've shown we've got the facilities that we can answer questions that quickly. It means that people aren't scared of failing anymore. It's normal. And that freedom to have an idea, try it out, see the results, learn from it, and then focus on the ones that work and hone them into something that can change the world is essential if we're going to develop new technologies much faster. During the COVID crisis, the Whittle Lab switched its rapid technology development teams from decarbonisation to serve the pandemic. We partnered with researchers from all over the Cambridge cluster. We also partnered with ProDrive, the racing company, Beko in Turkey, DeFi and Danel in South Africa, and we co-located their teams inside the Whittle Lab as part of our rapid technology development process. The result was the development of a flexible, high-end ventilator, the first to be manufactured in Africa at about a tenth of the cost of other available ventilators. This demonstrates the power of rapid technology development to work in other industries and other sectors. The main challenge is how we scale rapid technology development to a wider range of problems and to other industries. To achieve this, we aim to build the new Whittle Laboratory and the United Kingdom's National Centre for Propulsion and Power. The National Centre will lower the barrier of entry for industries to come and work in the Whittle Laboratory. And that's really important because traditionally, the costs and time it's taken for people to work in R&D, in aerospace, has meant that only the big companies have been able to do it. The National Centre for Propulsion and Power will be an amazing facility. It will allow us to test aero engines at fully realistic conditions. We've not had that capability before. 
so we'll be able to test more quickly and more cheaply than anywhere else. The opportunities are amazing. The more places and research institutions that can adopt this model, the more technology we can develop and the better chance we've got of decarbonising aviation by 2050. If we're going to rapidly decarbonise flight and power generation, we're going to have to dramatically change both the culture and the tools we use. Collaboration is absolutely essential. It is the cornerstone of the lab to date. Without our links with industry, we wouldn't have achieved what we've achieved so far. We know most of the technologies we're going to need are radical. The thing is with radical technologies, most of the new ideas fail. We need to find the ones that fail quickly, learn from them, pick the best ones and hone them to get a solution that works as quickly as possible to reduce the amount of carbon we produce. Change is not happening fast enough because industry is set up for incremental gain and maximum profit. And what we need to do is change the culture in industry to one which is suited to accelerate the process of transition to net zero carbon.